Eric, as a sociology major, you did a lot of writing in college. Is that right? Yeah, it is totally true. How did this help you in your business career? Well, in college, I learned how to write plenty of 100-page essays about war, why societies exist, and free will, but it didn't teach me the most important skill I use every day at work. And that would be... How to write a damn good email. This episode of Uncapped Notes is about writing an effective email. You might think you know how to do this, but most emails that we see from founders are kind of terrible. Janelle, let's play a lightning round game on what we think is bad about most emails that we read. Why don't you start? They're too long. There's no clear call to action. The formatting is terrible. And related to that, I cannot scan it. Okay, I think we could go on forever. Founders, if this is you, don't feel bad because schools do not teach nor prepare you for how to write in a business setting. Yeah, that's right. You know, when I was in high school, it felt like I would get rewarded for using flowery language and five paragraph essay formats for some book report. But I found that these lessons translate terribly <laughs> in the business setting. I think the key for a great business email is for the language to be simple, the call to action to be clear, and the formatting is scannable by using a ton of bullets. So this isn't something that's gonna win you a Pulitzer Prize or great writing, but I guarantee you that our method, which we'll describe in just a moment, will be well received by most people who read your email. Let's give an example. So I like to call this the call to action sandwich. I lead business development at Hustle Fund and a big component of my work is finding sponsorship for the variety of marketing and event opportunities at Hustle Fund. And by the way, we are looking for a sponsor for Uncapped No, so be sure to tag at Janelle Spilker on Twitter if you want to learn a little bit more. <laughs> Eric, stop getting distracted. Actually, thank you. Let's show an example of what an effective email looks like that I can use almost every day. Wow, this is really good. Can you break down what we're seeing in your call to action sandwich email? Yes. So first, you can see a simple acknowledgement of an action. In this case, it's that the sponsor has committed to sponsoring an episode of Uncapped Notes, and it's very concise. Next, I have outlined the actions to execute this sponsorship. Notice that this is not in a paragraph, but I do everything in bullets. Hang on a second. Why do bullets matter? Uh, we mentioned this before because they're scannable. Think about how many emails you receive every day. Can be dozens, in some cases even hundreds. You don't want your reader to need to decipher what is happening, and bullets are just super easy to read. All right, Janelle, these are all great points, but what completes this call to action sandwich? The last sentences are about acknowledging once again their commitment. In this case, it's the amount that they committed for sponsoring this episode. And a little word of gratitude and thanks at the end. Damn, Janelle, this is simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just a last point here. If this is a common email format that I use all the time, I preload this as a template on Superhuman. You can see the bracketed first name, which will pre-fill with the person's first name when I type in their email. So this follow-up email takes me seconds to draft. Amazing. I love this optimization as many founders will find that so many communications are repeatable and this will save a ton of time. Hey founders, do you have any other best practices for writing an effective business email? Let us know in the comments and replies below. And do not forget to check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash hustle fund. Appreciate your subscribes and likes and we will see you next time. Thank you.